Hello folks, this is KJ6EPL, and I've got another quick on-a-go fly update for you, and a short flight video. I gotta keep this short because I'm chasing another weather system, but let's get right into it. I do have this thing actually flying now off the FlySky transmitter. Um, first off, I'm gonna start the firmware update. Um, a lot of people just want to jump right in with that. I would discourage you from doing the firmware update. Hey folks, sorry about that. My camera batteries decided to die on me right then in the field. And so let's continue that discussion. First off, uh, the firmware update. It seems people are rushing to update the firmware they're on ago with the latest stuff from Mission Planner. I believe we're up to like 3.4.6 or 7 now. Anyway, I would highly advise holding off on that. Uh, first off, it's only necessary that you update uh, to get, if you want to use the IBUS protocol, if you're going to use PPM or SBUS, the support for that is already there in the stock firmware. You'll lose some features in upgrading to uh, 3.4 as well. First off, um, the Wi-Fi control, gone. I mean, camera support works, you'll still get the Wi-Fi FPV, you'll still be able to activate recording and photos, but all flight control over the quadcopter via your smartphone, gone. Hopefully, maybe sometime I can figure out how to get that back, but for now, it's gone. The other issue is that um, with the stock firmware, when it gets a GPS lock, the two rear LEDs turn blue and that feature too is gone they just stay flashing green with the new firmware it appears this is due to a parameter that allowed you to manually control the LEDs that is now gone in the new version so it's give or, it's give and take um, this is still a work in progress very much I, I work on this when I'm able, 
Mind you that, you know, I have a day job that I end up working 50 hours a week on average, as well as a number of other things. I mean, when you're a techie and you're competent with the stuff, at least for me, I have a bad habit of taking on too many projects. And uh, so I work on this when I can. I know a lot of you are anxious to get this thing up and running. I am too. But I do what I can. Also on top of that, I mean the weather this time of year has not been very cooperative. I mean out here in California, we need every bit of rain we can get. But it's not good for projects like this. <laughs> Another thing um, you may have noticed in, in the flight that I lost control of it a couple times. I'm not really sure what caused that. There was a little bit of wind, but the thing almost conked out and fell to the ground. And in my testing, it has actually disarmed itself a couple times in the air. I guess it wobbled enough to trip the flight controller's crash detection. Fortunately, that didn't happen. But, you know, if, if you're gonna experiment with this until we figure out what cause, what's causing that, make sure you fly over soft surfaces such as grass. If it had fallen when it was over the, the parking lot there and it crashed into the concrete, it could have exploded everywhere and that likely would have been the end of the project as I'm not gonna go wouldn't really want to go out and buy another one. The other thing you may have noticed at the start of the video, I had a little USB charge pack connected to the quadcopter. That's a little trick of mine. The GPS in this, well, the GPS antenna is the biggest joke of a GPS antenna that I have seen in a drone, or for that matter, and really in any device. It literally is this little printed trace on that top black cover and that's why it takes it a good five minutes to get a lock and the GPS just doesn't work very well. Anyway, um, the reason I had that connected is it allows it to sit there when it will, when, when it's connected to USB, the flight controller is powered off the USB bank and so is the GPS. This allows it to get a GPS fix without using up the flight battery. So once it has a lock, um, you just simply plug in the battery, hit the power button, and then disconnect your USB power bank. And you start on a full battery with a GPS lock. So I'll keep you updated on this stuff. Um, I'm gonna put my PID settings in the uh, video description. You can try it. Uh, back up your current parameters first before putting that in so that way if it causes problems you can always revert back. But I'll give you that stuff and um, thanks for watching. <laughs>